Hello. Hi. Uh, feel like a bit of a fish out of water here because I don't know any of you guys. And that doesn't happen a lot. And uh, it's really cool to be among a completely new set of people. Maybe the subject matter that I'm going to be speaking about also might be a little bit new to you, something that uh, you, are, you are not entirely familiar with. But I'll keep it short and I'll try to keep it sweet as well. Uh, Charita, thank you for dispelling the myth that Dialogue is an evil corporate entity. And they're obviously doing a lot of good stuff, which I think we should support given the, given the amount, of, uh, uh, amount of services we do managed to get off them. So uh, great stuff. It was very educational for me. And I'll tell you how much of a fish out of water I was because I didn't know what an API is. I have a 2012 HTC phone and I'm not on Instagram. So what am I doing here? I don't quite know. Uh, but what is an API, guys? What? So I'm not the only one who didn't know. Someone knows. I just, I'm just curious. What? Say again. <laughs> okay, clearly nobody's going to tell me because uh, that's how people deal with information in this country. So my presentation is, um, is uh, titled, Is Social Media Contributing to Sporting Mediocrity? Um, as uh, Millie said, I am a practicing lawyer, so there's a very, uh, a very distinct place that we like to start um, doing our work, and that is with definitions. So we're discussing today, is social media contributing to social mediocrity? And I think it's important for us to discuss what, obviously all of you guys know what social media is, but what mediocrity is. And mediocrity is not something we're talking about in terms of being absolute rubbish. We're not talking about uh, people being terrible at what they do, people who have two left feet and still go dancing. That's not the kind of thing we're talking about. We're talking about people who are, look at the synonyms over there, ordinary, common, commonplace, indifferent, average. So people who are okay, but they're not excellent. If you see the antonyms which I highlighted there, the antonyms which is what is not mediocre is something that's exceptional and something that's excellent. So the, aver the opposite of mediocre is excellent. The, aver the opposite of mediocre is not average. The opposite of mediocre is excellent. And I'm sure I'm right in thinking that all of us want to be excellent at whatever we do. So sports is obviously a large part of life. I don't know of in general in society. I don't know how much of a part of life it is for you guys. Uh, but it just is a part. It would obviously differ whether it's 10% to 50%. For me, it's about 80% of my life. Uh, but the issue is, are we looking to get excellent in the one thing that we are dedicated to doing? How do we do that? We'll get to that in a little bit. But let's examine the mediocrity uh, point a little more. Just in case you're not entirely clear on what mediocre means, uh, I've got you a picture that will dispel any kind of doubt as well. So. That's the, uh, that's the dictionary definition. This is what I found on Merriam-Webster uh, for mediocre. But uh, no, I'm just joking. He's a good guy. Not a great cricketer, though. Uh, but <laughs> OK, we're going backwards. Have they Cesar Pereira's friend manning the? So the reason for a large bit of uh, mediocrity coming around in the, um, in the uh, sporting circle is, what I, is a phrase that I would like to coin, which I call instant celebrity. And uh, that I will tell you a little bit of a story about. So about five years ago, I went to St. Thomas's, Charita went to Royal, we've known each other since school. Uh, and there's obviously a fierce rivalry between the two schools. So the St. Thomas's College basketball coach called me up and said, uh, we are playing Royal on Saturday. Can you come in and do some team building work with the St. Thomas's team? And I said, yeah, sure, no problem. Called up my friend Jehan, who's also a Royalist, but you know, these rivalries don't, uh, don't emerge after we leave school. We're all friends. So I took him along, and uh, then I went and visited the St. Thomas's College basketball uh, practices. And what I saw really terrified me because we were awful. St. Thomas's were absolutely shockingly bad. Ah, thanks much. We were absolutely shockingly bad. I mean, we couldn't beat an under-15 team of Royal. We really couldn't. And the coach knew this, so I told him, 
macam bad scene. And uh, he said, oh, bad scene, tamai. Mau akar keran dah puluhan dek keran. So we did, and uh, we worked with them a little bit, and they responded well. But that weekend, I had to go out of Colombo, so I was not going to be there for the Royal Tomian match. Uh, my father was one of the few guys who played for uh, Sri Lanka while he was still in school in basketball, and so he actually coincidentally happened to be the chief guest at the game. So I was coming back from wherever I'd been out of Colombo. I can't remember where, and um, I was checking Facebook because I wasn't driving. I was checking, and I saw one of the boys who had been at this camp that we did, and he had friended me over the course of that week. And then I'm seeing these pictures of him, like shooting layups, and girls commenting on, like, "Wow, you were so awesome today," and that kind of stuff. Like loads of comments, loads of likes, and he, he's taking free throws, and he's standing with his blazer, and I'm like, "Wow." We won the game. How did that happen? So I called my father immediately, and I said, "Dad, what happened? How do we manage to win?" So what do you mean win? We lost by 30. <laughs> and uh, so that's what I'm talking about in terms of instant celebrity. So, as one of my friends pointed out just down downstairs, you know, coming up again coincidentally, he said, "Boys, when they win their first 15 jersey now." They think they've won this. This, for those of you who can't see, this is an All Blacks training jersey. So they think that suddenly, just because they're on Instagram, just because their friends are liking them, uh, just because they're on Facebook and everybody's going, "Oh my God, he was so awesome," that it's um, that it's somehow a measure of their excellence. And we remember excellence being the opposite of mediocre. But the problem with that is um, what I'd also like to call. The democratization of opinion. Now, everyone knows how democracy works, right? It's a little, it's a little more complex than, than we like to give it credit for. But in very simple layman's terms, democracy is everyone has a say. So whether I vote for X or you vote for X, that vote means the exact same thing. So unfortunately, it becomes a numbers game at some point, especially when it comes to an election. Because if a guy who knows economics votes for Maitri Pala Sirisena, who has just said that rain drives up GDP by two and a half percent, if a guy who knows economics votes for him, then that guy is stupider than the guy who doesn't know economics and still votes for Maitri Pala Sirisena, right? So there is a kind of weighting of the same opinion, and as a result of that. Each person's opinion becomes equally valuable, especially in a vote. And when you look at social media and Instagram or Facebook or whatever it may be,、uh, there is a lot of voting that happens. When you like something, when you dis, well, you can't dislike something. When you love something, when you go wow something, or when you go angry or something, you're always giving them a vote. It may be a positive vote or a negative vote, but it is a vote, and that vote is based on nothing but our opinion. It's based on nothing but our opinions, and that has become the problem in terms of social media encouraging mediocrity, not just in sport, but if you look around, I think we might have to accept to ourselves that things may be not going as well as they could. We're not in the doldrums, but we could be. If you take another sporting example, five World Cups ago, Sri Lanka were champions. This time, we have to qualify to get there. We have, but. We still had to qualify, so the fact that this period coincided with the advent of social media—I'm not saying is causal, but I'm sure that there is some kind of correlation between that and the kind of sporting performances we are showing today. So Sri Lanka is way down, I think, below Afghanistan, if I'm not mistaken, in the T20 rankings, the one-day rankings. We're not doing too well, and Afghanistan is a country that probably doesn't have as much. Wi-Fi connectivity, Facebook, Instagram. Those guys are playing for their lives. They are playing to get out of the country. They are playing for an IPL contract because they don't want to go back to Kabul. But for us, nothing really matters because hey, I may have been crap at my game today, but hey, I've got 50 likes on my、um, on my、uh, feed, on my whatever it is that I put up from the game. So the result of、uh, the democratization of 
opinion is the fact that there's no weightage for expert opinions. Now, I love the Papare.com. I work for them. They're brilliant. They do some outstanding work uh, for sports in this country. But what it has done, inversely, is that it has allowed a guy like me, who's never lifted a cricket bat in his life, to become like the local Harsha Bogle. And is that okay? I don't know. I'm not saying it is. I'm not saying it isn't. I mean, some people may be able to match an international standard, but the fact is it, the access becomes a lot easier. So when Harsha Bogle is talking to Ian Chappell, I'm talking to Johnny on the street, who also is not of the same kind of credibility. So as a result of that, before social media came, when we were looking for our opinions, we looked to the experts. We would watch the Gillette Wide World of Sports, we'd watch Trans World Sport, where they interviewed all these guys, we'd read the newspapers, which used to quote these guys. We'd do a lot of that stuff, and we'd be like, oh, did you see so-and-so said about this? And that would be the gospel truth. Unfortunately, or maybe fortunately for some who don't have a voice, that now everybody's opinion becomes kind of the same with Ian Chappell's opinion, or whatever it may have been, as a result of the accessibility to those opinions via social media. You may not be Ian Chappell's um, or Harsha Bogle's or whoever's um, Facebook friend, because he can't accept you, but the fact is that because of social media, you are able to take maybe something he said, say it's your own, and become an expert almost overnight. And there's a lot of plagiarization that goes on on um, social media as well. So that's one issue. The other issue is the echo chambers. What I was talking about earlier, the little boy who, uh, who got all these likes for losing a game by 30, uh, the fact is that he is in his little echo chamber of his friends. We know what can happen with echo chambers. People like Donald Trump get elected, right? So that was something that was vastly blamed on the algorithms of Facebook and some other social media uh, sites which really made sure that people were targeted in a manner that their, their opinions could be influenced. So similarly, if we have X amount of friends on Facebook or Instagram, it's very unlikely that they would say something negative to you, even if it was the truth. It's just that kind of a culture. How many of you have seen a really, well, not really, but a kind of sad picture from one of your friends and thought, hey, I really have to like this? All of you have done that, right? You've all done that. You're looking defensive, but I'm sure you all have done that. As some have said, yeah, she really doesn't look that good here, but you know what? Bang. <laughs> um, or he, right, before I get accused of being sexist. Um, but the uh, fact is that that happens. The echo chambers do happen. And for the guy who lost the game, they lost by 30, they couldn't have been very good. Everybody's saying, oh, my God, you were awesome. And you go home thinking, hey, yeah, all these people said I was awesome, so I must be okay. What the hell does a coach know? So again, you get a, you get a combination of those factors. The coaches is the expert opinion, but because of your echo chamber, you've kind of completely um, overshadowed that relevant opinion. The other one is the absence of rigor. Um, when I say absence of rigor, what I mean is that there's a lot of times where I see a lot of the Sri Lankan club rugby players, school players, They've got their pictures on with them carrying the ball and maybe fending someone off or scoring a try or just catching the ball even. And it's one tiny millisecond snapshot in what was an 80-minute game, perhaps. And the issue is when you see that with its filters and all that kind of thing, hey, it looks good because, hey, this guy takes his protein, he's been lifting in the gym, and that's something all of us do, right? Not just, well, most of us do. Uh, not just rugby players. So what is the differentiating factor? The factor is that this guy needs to go out there and play a good game of rugby. And if he hasn't done that, he can still put his um, pictures up on Instagram, and nobody's going to ask him, uh, yeah, that's all well and good, Machang, but did you all actually win? So instead, they're just going to put the likes up there and say whatever it is that they have to say, thereby repeating that cycle upwards. So nobody says, uh, yeah, you look, you look good, Machang, great work with your bench presses, but did you all win? And nobody ever asks that, because if you see someone asking that on Facebook, you're either a troll or a jackass, right? So that's the kind of, um, that's the kind of culture that social media is breeding, so there's no real culture of accountability. 
You can play as rubbish as you like, but as long as you've got a good picture on uh, courtesy of the Papares cameras most often, uh, the fact is that you think you've gone home and done a decent job. So if the politicians read the papers, the state papers, they think, hey, I'm awesome. Uh, they read something else and they don't, uh, then they will get that sense of accountability and that sense of balance. But as a result of that, this is what we have. Uh, so, you remember I told you the antonym, uh, the opposite of uh, mediocre is excellent. So, we're talking about sports and athletic excellence is received only by hard work. There is absolutely no um, question about this. There is no debate about this. Uh, I'm sure Gaia will tell you when she comes up that hard work is the only thing that you can, um, you can achieve athletic excellence with. So, you can't go to the gym for 15 minutes and then stuff your face full of burgers and be like, you know, I worked hard. No, that's not how it happens. Uh, what happens is this. And I'm going to let you watch the whole thing. It's just a minute and 30 seconds, but uh, let you watch it just so that you understand what goes in. the best player in the world, a guy who revolutionized basketball by shooting deadly accurate three-pointers. How does he do that? By doing that. Right? So he doesn't just turn up one day, get out of his car and be like, yeah, I'll shoot some threes. Uh, he practices and he takes in excess of 300 shots a day. So that you would have seen maybe him taking 30. Right? So he does that tenfold every single day. And that's hard work for you. And that's the only way to achieve athletic excellence. So there's no real shortcut to that. And when Steph Curry is doing that, the Golden State Warriors or the All Blacks or the Sri Lanka cricket team or whoever, they've got a budget, they've got a social media guy, and they've got somebody taking pictures and posting them up for him. You don't have Steph Curry going like... <laughs> right? That doesn't happen. Because he's not got the mind space to do that. He's not got a mind space to put up a hashtag. He's not got the mind space uh, to do a caption for that. So as a result of the hard work, you don't really have time for social media. So I would say that there's actually a, um, a divide between how much time someone spends on social media, unless that's what you do, that someone spends on social media as opposed to practicing. So if you see someone who's a serious sportsman and they're on social media a lot, uh, then that's probably not a sign of their excellence. You get guys like Kumar Sangakara, Mahila Jawadana, they're on Twitter a lot now, but they've retired. They can be, right? But you don't get the usual cricketers uh, who are playing in the team now uh, going on in, uh, in that way. So this is why I say that social media is kind of an enemy to excellence for those reasons I set out below and the amount of time and headspace it takes to do a good social media account, which is why uh, there are uh, people who are specialized in branding others and uh, making sure that teams and all uh, receive the, the kind of publicity that they need on digital platforms. It doesn't happen uh, individually via the person themselves. 
so that's why I think social media is contributing to uh, sporting mediocrity. Uh, I was told that there would be some questions if anybody has some. Otherwise, I'm happy to hand over. Yes. Uh, I was wondering why you think we still need uh, athletic uh, excellence or uh, why mediocrity is bad in sports these days since um, I don't think it well, might be a bit weird to say this to you but uh, it doesn't add a lot these days and the attention that the people the excellence people get they can now get through the social media what you say is a bad thing yeah absolutely so I'm functioning on the assumption that excellence is the goal. And you raise a very valid point in the fact that excellence may not be the goal. And the goal may be just to achieve whatever you want to achieve for that moment. And people may be very happy doing that. And I take that point. Uh, but I was coming from the place, I made the assumption before the presentation that everyone would want to achieve uh, sporting excellence. And I think when you are a professional sportsman, that is kind of the target that you want to set and not obviously at the Stephen Curry levels, but at the lower levels where sport is semi-professional here in Sri Lanka, there are a lot of people who coast, and uh, I don't think that's acceptable from a professional point of view. But I get your point that not everybody wants to be excellent. They get what they want uh, from playing a sport recreationally, and hey, that's life, yeah. Uh, do, you, uh, do you propose any solution to, given that, this is a problem. Uh, do you have any solution? Or, uh, I, I don't think it's an accepted thing that it's a problem. Uh, I'm just voicing something that I've, I've noticed over the course of the last few years covering a few sports. Um, I think that's a really good, deep-seated, layered, complex question. Because I think it's all those sports is a microcosm it kind of permeates every level of society, the fact that social media is doing them. There's so much, as, we, as Millie spoke about earlier, about fake news and the lack of rigor in that sort of thing, the lack of credibility. Um, so I think it's a problem that we need to understand that social media is for a specific purpose. And if we are using it for that purpose, then it's fine. But when it kind of takes us over and when we get addicted to it, that's really where the issue is. So if you're addicted to your likes, as opposed to doing really well on the sports field, then that's not a problem I can propose a solution for. That's, that's an internal issue. Anyone else? Any more questions? There's a couple. Okay, I think we go here. Then. So basically you said that uh, social media actually brought it to this particular point. But then if, you, if I remember correctly, like, way before even social media existed. Like when we were growing up, when I was like in primary school, I remember my cousin used to play for the team. And there was this thing called the schoolboy cricket of the year where you like buy newspapers and vote for that person, right? And most of the time the person who wins it is not the best player, right? So you can't really say that social media brought it up to this point. And another issue I would say is like, even though you do play for a team, like very uh, rarely would you actually get scouted to maybe go for a higher up in the leads, right? And you need a certain amount of marketing and publicity to actually get you to that particular point. But yes, I do agree that you have to be a good player as well. Uh, but um, as a solution, like since you said that, okay, that they spend more of time on social media, maybe they could, you could actually suggest that they get their friends to take the pictures instead of them doing it themselves and actually practice their butts off to get it done. Maybe they do, and I'm sure there are people like that. Um, I think, and because I'm a lawyer, I'm very careful with the words I use. Uh, so I did, I did, uh, I did remember saying that I don't think there's a causal link, but that there is a correlation. But the whole, I remember this myself, right? There was a schoolboy cricket of the year, rugby player of the year, all that kind of stuff. And I think that's appalling. I think that should be done away with, right? Because we used to get prefects coming and say, Ado Malli, So we used to have to go and tell our families, you know, can you cut these out? Can you tell auntie so-and-so to cut them out? Can you tell our neighbors to cut these out? And we had to take like bundles of these things to school, otherwise you get smashed up, right? So that's not a good thing. And it's the same culture, like we said before. It may not be just social media. I think social media um, 
look, it's the same thing that leads to addiction in cigarettes or drugs or whatever. There's some void you're trying to fill, right? So if you're, if you're saying that I am, I am uh, a better player because I want the most popular, then clearly you have insecurities that someone else with a medical degree needs to deal with. Uh, so that's my response. Um, so don't you think the onus should be on the actual recipient of such, like you know, media and not the not the platform itself? It's, it feels like you were saying that social media is the reason that this is happening, but it feels like actually what's happening is you know the people going and saying, "Hey, well done, you played well," and whatnot when the guy scored two points and he took one free throw and missed it. You know what I mean? So like, shouldn't shouldn't we all take a I don't know, something from that and say, okay, look, we should be more critical and analyze the situation instead of just like, you know, commending the nice picture or something like that. Uh, Sanji, if that's what people take back from here, <clears throat> I've done my job. So that's, that's exactly the point. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> like, I mean, we're friends, we play together. And if you're putting on a bit, I tell you, Macha, you need to hit the gym a little bit, right? But if I said, hey, Macha, you're looking great, you'd be like, yeah, we just keep going. And then I'm actually feeding into, uh, feeding into something that's really bad for you. So, yes, I think we owe it to ourselves to be honest with our friends and not just support them for the sake of supporting them or just put a like there because they think that you, they'll get upset if you don't. So I think that question is an entirely valid one. Social media is fabulous, don't get me wrong. I spend a lot of time on it and I get a lot of benefit from it. Uh, but I think it's how we use it and how we allow it to affect our lives, positively or negatively. Uh, that's the most important thing. So thanks for that. Thank you very much for uh, having me. Shan, one, yes. one more here. One, oh. one more. <clears throat> uh, you addressed the fact that uh, the good things that like how people uh, take it in a good way, like the likes and everything. But then again, there's another side where uh, people start criticizing certain players on vague information or certain accusations and that might lead for them to be demotivated on their sports and to uh, break their self-esteem. So how would you uh, comment on that? Well, I, w I would again, I go back to my earlier point of if you're actually training, if you're actually putting in the hours in the gym or on the field or whatever it is, you won't really be having time uh, to go through all those criticisms, read them and respond to them and stuff like that. And I do know that's true of a lot of uh, top-level sportsmen. They don't even know what people are saying about them in the media. Uh, so unless somebody comes and tells them, Machang Bagan Araka Kiwa. So that's the kind of interactions you need, to, uh, you need to limit. So if you are really dedicated and working towards excellence, the issue that you raise won't be a problem, I think. <laughs>